Hey guys, it's Shadowsworm. I've got the patch 5.15 updates for League of Legends here, open for you guys to hear. If you want to go ahead and you know read them yourself, when you start up League of Legends, click the bottom right corner for the notes. Otherwise, I'll just tell you all you need to know. So let let's just get going. First things first, Fiora. She is going to be getting an update this patch, or the update for her has been enabled. Now I'll give you guys a little rundown of that in just a few minutes here, but on to some champion changes. I mean, they changed, you know, some loading screens. They did a HUD update. You know, nothing major with that, at least. Next, Gangplank, he's back. His Q uh, pretty much auto-acquires a smaller radius, is what they're saying. And on alternative maps, he gets... A steady um, amount of his silver serpents on you know maps that aren't tw uh, I was about to say twist the tree line of uh, summoners rift but ultimately his Q parlay uh, great the uh, greatly reduce the radius when parlay automatically acquires a keg at 1 HP and Global Investment now automatically gains one Silver Serpent for every second on the Howling Abyss, Butcher's Bridge, Twisted Tree Line, and Crystal Scar. So, there you go. Fiora, I'll talk about her after I'm done with everything else because they did change her quite a bit. But uh, moving on from her, Echo, they reduced the overall amount, or the base amount that his abilities have like as far as his shields you know or his shield you know all the damage he gets from certain things but or that yeah he does with certain things but they upped the AP ratio his passive Z drive re uh, renaissance uh, now has a 0.8 AP ratio versus a 0.7 the slow got dropped from 40 50 60 70 per or you know at respective levels down to 30 40 50 60 at levels 1, 6, 11, and 16. However, the movement speed he gets is now 40, 50, 60, 80, up from 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, at levels 1, 6, 11, and 16. So, ultimately, he gets, you know, movement speed quicker. You know, that, that's all you need to know. He gets his 80% uh, percent a lot quicker. Uh, his W Parallel Convergence, the shield base went from a maximum of 330 to 160, but the AP ratio went from 0.6 to 1.5. And his R Chrono Break, the health restored went from 20, 25, 30% of damage taken over the last 4 seconds to 20% of the damage taken over the last 4 seconds. And the heal ratio went up from... 1% per 30 AP to 1% per 15 AP. So, you know, nice, you know, pretty much doubling the, you know, healing ratio from AP at least. Nidalee, her Q Javelin Toss now has a, a slightly larger cast time. Sorry about this, guys. If it sounds like I'm, you know, mutilating something, I'm fixing my pop filter. But uh, yeah, her javelin toss cast someone from 0.125 seconds to a quarter of a second. The spear damage went down from 50, 75, 100, 125, 150 to 50, 70, 90, 100, or 110, 130. The, uh, or that's the minimum spear damage. The maximum is 150, 220, or went from... 150, 225, 300, 375, 450, to 150, 210, 270, 330, 390. So an overall damage nerf on her Q, or her spear at least. Her W Bushwhack, the vision radius went from 1200 for a quarter second, or for half a second, to 400 for half a second. So, yeah. The vision radius on cast, that is. Before it had a very, very wide vision radius. Now they just made it the size of Teemo. So, yeah. Sivir, 
she now gets her movement speed, you know, a lot quicker. You know, oh no, I'm sorry, movement speed start, er, yeah, starts lower, but scale is back up. And allies entering her ultimate radius share Sivir's current speed bonus. So, what would happen is it wouldn't give her, you know, give her allies a percentage. Now it's whatever she's got, her allies get. Went from 60% at all ranks to 40, 50, 60%. So, rank 3, you're getting the same movement speeds. Just now, you don't get that until, what is it, uh, level 16. So, yeah. Nothing huge, nothing huge. Timo, his passive camouflage. Attack speed bonus went from 40% at all levels to 20, 40, 60, 80 at levels 1, 5, 10, 15. The stealth timer went from 2 seconds to 1.5. Uh, Timo uh, stealth twice as fast while in brush. And moving inside brush while camouflage no longer breaks your stealth. So, yay, Timo! His R, or his ultimate, knocks his traps. Uh, the slowed now decays over 4 seconds. The cast range went from 200 to 300, 600, 900, depending on the ranks. Uh, casting traps on an existing Noxus trap causes them to bounce 3, 4, 5 Timos further in the direction they were originally tossed. And Mushrooms now die to 3 basic attacks from ranged champions, 2 from melee. So, yeah, it's no longer like, oh my god, I gotta get all that HP. It's just, you know, one, two, three, or two hits if you're melee. Just like how Zyra's plants are. And that's it for champion changes. For items, Zeke's Harbinger. Uh, the charges per ability use went from 12 to 8. Charges per basic attack went from 6 to 4. Charges per... Ability use went from 6 to 4 as well. Charges per ally basic attack went from 3 to 2. The buff duration went from 6 to 8 seconds. Um, they fixed a bug where Zeke's stacks weren't uh, transferring to new target or to a new target after recasting the active. And fixed a bug where Zeke's wasn't giving assists. So, yeah. that That's pretty good. The HUD update, they... Switched to a thicker font. Font size has been increased in many of the locations across the HUD. And added a drop shadow to the chat box. Okay. The uh, champion stat panel. Buffed stats once again use colored text. Stat icons are larger. Critical strike chance and attack range have swapped positions. Crit chance is now in the default view. While attack range is on the expanded view. Up to the brightness of the XP bar. Pretty much just hot updates. Nothing, you know, serious. The FPS and ping and indicators are larger. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, bug fixes for black market brawls. Enchantment teleport. Active effect can no longer be bugged. Or two casts without a cooldown. Rift scutter now drops a soul. So, a scuttler, yeah, that's for Thresh. Updated a trinket no longer, or upgrading a trinket no longer resets its cooldown. Using a consumable item no longer temporarily disables Devourer's effects. Galio no properly gets assist when shielding allies with his uh, W, Bulwark. And they've got Cottontail Fizz coming up as a new skin. They've got base chroma pack for Cassiopeia, uh, skin chroma pack for Dragon Slayer Vayne, and Koinami. But that's it for the champions. Now we're going to get into the change to Fiora. If you guys give me one second. Pretty much uh, Fiora, they've gone away with all of her abilities except, well, you know, how they used to be, except for like her lunge. You know, I'll show you guys the lunge video. You know, ooh, don't want to deafen you guys. This is pretty much, you know, what her lunge looks like now. For those of you that missed it, you know, 
she's got a, it's a skill shot now. That's all it is. It's a short range skill shot, just like how uh, Rennington's slice and dice is. Her passive now lets her to see where hitting an enemy champion would be most effective. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Her lunge, like I said, it tries to prioritize enemy weak spots. And those weak spots are found by your passive, which is Duelist Dance. Her W Repost or Repost. Uh, Fiora pretty much uh, parrying all. She parries all damage and hard crowd control abilities for a fraction of a second. And after she's done parrying, Fiora's attack or Fiora attacks in the target direction. Pretty much just watch this video. Sorry, let me actually turn my speaker off. Pretty much. Watching this video, Draven's hitting her and hitting her and hitting her, or hitting her, and for about a second and a half, she's no longer being damaged while Repost is active, and if she parries any hard crowd control effects, such as fear, silence, etc., she stuns the target instead of slowing them and damaging them. I mean, she still damages them, but she, instead of slowing them... She stuns them. Her E blade work, it takes over the effect of her blade rush, I believe it was. I forget the exact name of it. it. It was something along that line. Where it would increase your movement speed and you'll know, continue going if you were hitting enemy champions. And if you were hitting enemy champions, it would increase your attack speed for by a certain percentage for a certain amount of time. Her new E, pretty much as soon as she activates it, she gains increased attack speed for her, for two basic attacks. The first attack slows but cannot crit, while the second attack is a guaranteed crit. So there's the trade-off. A slow, then a big crit. Which is, is good. Her ultimate grand challenge, pretty much from what I'm gathering, it... She marks a target... Just similar to how Poppy mock, you know, marks her target. I was about to say mocks. Like I'm still in New York. And now she can lunge through the target. Or from one side to another. And she can attack all the weak, uh, weak spots. And deal chunks of damage. And retreat with a small speed bonus. When all of those weak spots are gone. Pretty much the video is showing you, you know, all four of the weak spots. And you're doing a ton of damage at all those weak spots. Once that fourth spot is gone, boom, you get a big chunk of movement speed for a short duration. That's pretty much her ultimate. It's going to be difficult to get that going. You know, for people to set all of that up that haven't played on the PTR. But, uh, yeah, this is her new kit. This is the change they did to Fiora. People crying and whining, oh my god, this isn't Fiora. Before she was too much like Juggernaut from Dota, in my opinion. Now she actually has, you know, her own identity in a way. I mean, yeah, she's marking target doing extra damage, but this is one target she's doing it to, not multiple enemies at the same time. So, you know, you can probably expect the same items on her, but, you know, maybe a little more with the, you know, like maybe getting a frozen mallet or trinity force won't be as bad for her as it was previously. Because I know before building her, like, big beef with Ravenous Hydra and you're good to go. Because your ultimate's going to kill everyone regardless. But now you can, you know, you can build your Maul of Memorias, your Ravenous Hydra. But you got to work a little more to get those kills. That's all I'm gathering here. Let me know what you guys think about the Fiora change down in the comments below. I personally like them. I really do. Before, like I said, she felt so, you know, so stagnant and boring that as soon as you got your ultimate, you won. It. I don't get that feeling. I mean, I get that feeling from Fiora still, but it's not, you know, oh my god, you gotta kill Fiora because she's gonna wreck the entire team 1v5. Now it's, oh, she'll go in the back, pick off somebody, and then... You know, she kind of, I mean, she can still do more, but, you know, it's not like, oh my god, she just killed half, you know, she bought us all to half health in one ultimate. Now this is, oh, she just about killed one person, 
with her ultimate. You know, it's nothing big. Hell, people, other champions do that all the time. You know, all the time. Ziggs, Fizz, Karthus, just to name a few. Another one would be Malzar. Let's see, another AD champion that does that. Uh, Ash, Tristana, you know, just to name a few. So, there you go, guys. That's it for the patch 5.15 updates as well as the Fiora change. My name is Vince Shadowswalm, and as always, I will talk to you all next time.